You can do the latitude calculation exercise yourself by following my instructions. We are getting out of Larian. The mission begins in mid-December, just before sunset. This is very convenient. Uh, the night is very long at this time in the northern latitudes. A couple of hours after leaving the base, you will have to have the opportunity to observe the culminations of a large number of navigational stars in one night. Before sunset we can make a plan for astronomical observations. Today is December 12th. We are located in the northern hemisphere to plan astronomical observations. We will use the table for northern latitudes. The table consists of three parts. Upper culminations graph, lower culminations graph, and time intervals between upper culminations. We will be interested in the bottom line, which contains the graph of upper culminations in December. From the graph you can see that in December the sunset falls on the upper culmination of Fermi Lode. In the first half of December there is a chance to see the upper culmination of, of um, Fermi Lode. At the end of December the upper culmination of Fermi Lode is unavailable for observation. The time intervals between upper culminations are valid for observations if they are taken from the same position. One hour and ten minutes after the upper culmination of Famila, the upper culmination of Alpharats can be observed further in the following order. Between the upper culminations of Alpharats and Aldebaran, a lower culmination of Alioth occurs. If you are at 35 degrees north latitude or even closer to the north then 45 minutes after the upper culmination of Alpharats you will be able to observe the lower culmination of Alioth. 3 hours and 40 minutes after the lower culmination of Alioth the upper culmination of Aldebaran can be seen. 38 minutes after the upper culmination of Aldebaran, the upper culmination of Rigel and Capella occurs almost simultaneously. Thereafter, 39 minutes later, the upper culmination of Betelgeuse occurs. Between the upper culminations of Betelgeuse and Sirius, the lower culmination of Vega occurs. If you are at 53 degrees north latitude or even closer to the north. Then after 42 minutes you can observe the lower culmination of Vega. Seven minutes after this the upper culmination of Sirius occurs. 53 minutes after Sirius, Persian. In another five minutes, Pollux. After the upper culmination of Pollux, 57 minutes later you can see the lower culmination of Deneb if you are at latitude 46 degrees north or even further north. One hour and 25 minutes after that, the upper culmination of Regulus can be seen. 
down occurs with the upper culmination of Elioth. In early December the upper culmination of Elioth is, is not visible because down comes earlier. At the end of December down comes later and uh, you see the upper culmination of Elioth. Today is December 12th. We have a small chance of seeing the upper culmination of Elioth. Having received information from this table, we compile a list of stars that we can presumably observe. To clarify this list, we need to keep in mind the approximate latitude from which we will conduct observations. It is about 47 degrees north latitude. We can tell right away that we will not see the lower culmination of Vega because we are farther south than 53 degrees north latitude. It is also doubtful that we can use the lower culmination of Deneb to determine our latitude, but we can still observe it if we are farther north than 46 degrees north latitude. We open another table. Based on this table we can find out the remaining stars from this list are suitable for determining latitude with the exception of Capella, which apocalmination occurs in your blind spot. Apocalmination of the stars that we will observe occurs when true azimuth is 180 degrees. To determine latitude we will use the formula in the table. To determine the latitude when lower culmination occurs we will use a formula that is in another table. So our observations uh, will take place according to the following program. stars appear. We have stopped the U-boat and can start observing. We need to find family out. Family is now hidden behind the clouds. Here he is. We direct the sextant in accordance with the true azimuth equal to 180 degrees. Camilla to the left of the observer's meridian. Based on the hint of at the top of the table, you can find out that the upper culmination of Famula has not happened yet and we will be able to observe it. Because of the clouds, we may miss the moment of culmination 
when it is necessary to make measurements of altitude. I can see through the clouds that Famula is now at true azimuth equal to 180 degrees. I measure the altitude of Famula. In order to make accurate measurements, two rules must be followed. First, altitude measurements are made using the phineme in line. The distance between the phineme in line and the crosshair horizontal line during measurement should not exceed uh, one and a half centimeters. Otherwise, the measurement result will not be correct. Second, to avoid errors, it is necessary to set the correct position of the phineme in line during measurements. Phineme in line is a thin line, one row of pixels thick. On the 705 sextant scale, the difference between adjacent rows of pixels is 3.1 arc minutes. Moving the phineme in line, one row of pixels changes the measured altitude by 3.1 arc minutes which is equivalent to the difference in position on the 705 map of 6.2 kilometers. One arc minute equals 2 kilometers on 705 map. The visualization of stars in 705 can be different. When measuring, we need to find the altitude of the center of the star. Accurate measurements are possible if the star has any of these shapes. With these star shapes it is impossible to make accurate measurements. The correct position of the phineme in line when measuring is as follows. The shape of the star can change when you move the crosshair. If the star visualization differs from these images, it is necessary to obtain one of these images by vertically moving the crosshair, provided that the distance from the center of the crosshair to the star does not exceed one and a half centimeters. For smooth and precise aiming, hold down the control key.